everybody and welcome back to the Pottery Corner, my studio down on the south coast of England near Chichester. Welcome back to another glaze kiln fire opening um, and without further ado we'll get on with it. The kiln is down to 39 degrees centigrade um, so it's plenty cool enough for me to empty so I'm just going to flick the kiln supply, you know what's coming. Um, I have had a very very just a small tiny tiny sneaky peek um, so let's get on with it uh, in this kiln are um, I think they're all students pieces I don't think there's any of my work in here I have got my gloves out but only just to protect my hands if I need it so first thing out of this kiln Leslie is the smaller of your um, cornucopia platters so Leslie has modelled some uh, fruit and vegetables, pumpkin and carrots and butternut squash um, in a cornucopia which she um, made a sprig mould for and in the cornucopia we used manganese oxide or no actually it wasn't it was red iron oxide and then this over the top the background glaze is iron luster no yellow iron yellow get it right Sarah iron yellow over the top which is kind of sort of like Almost the same as oatmeal, but not quite so vanilla-y. Um, so that's a nice piece. The colours, the underglaze colours, Leslie, are very good. I hope you can see that close up. So that's a goodie. The larger of the two, um, I think, is still waiting to be done. It's still on the shelf. As you can see, as usual, there's quite a shelf load of stuff to do. We are today, day seven of the uh, second uh, UK, um, not UK, England lockdown. Um, so we're still battling through our rather large pile of glazing. Right, okay, next out is this, which is Diane's. So this has been made using a former for the shape. And then she's used my um, textured sprigs that I make um, and textured a slab using the sprigs and that is glazed in Amoco Deep Sea. So that's really very nice. Nice blue, like a mid blue. Um, and obviously where the glaze holds in the texture, you get this nice, you can actually see each individual um, shape, which is really lovely. So that's a very useful bowl. Very nice, Diane. Jess, this is one of your platters. So Jess is one of the 30th birthday girls. This one is beautiful, I really like this one. This is Amoco Storm, and she's used one of the pastry made textured rollers. So I was talking about the textured rollers before, um, and the cookie rollers um, that we use are from a company called Pastry Made in Poland, um, who make them obviously for cookies, but they have really nice deep um, texture on them so you can use them for clay and with just one glaze on there um, you can see that where it holds in the in the actual texture it makes it look darker and that is a really beautiful shiny blue glaze so very very nice and a lovely texture on it too so that one's a goodie Jess right let's lift out the shelf see how warm that is no it's not very warm we can do that with our hands Right, what's next? Okay, uh, and again, this is three of the uh, the um, 30th birthday platters, ladies. So this, this is a Huntley & Noble heart-shaped form, um, which has been glazed, again, in the same glaze, actually, Amoco Deep Sea. This one has just got uh, icicle stamps on it, so that's very nice, nice heart-shaped plate. And uh, the girls came... Uh, to do a Christmas platters course, um, ostensibly, presumably, to make some Christmas presents. So, I mean, that would make a lovely present. Um, Becca, this is yours. Um, it has a cookie on the bottom, as you can see, which will, oh, it's come off, um, as I say, which will need a tap. But I use them so that uh, I don't have to worry about things like this going on. So I just need to clean up the base of that. I hope you can see that there's a shard from the cookie stuck on the bottom which would obviously have been stuck on my kiln shelf okay so this is again it's a molded um she's molded this actually on one of my 
bisque fired um, proformers that, that we use in the studio. And this is Amoco Deep Fire Brick. Um, and she's done a lovely job of texturising this. This sort of basket weave uh, texture is a roller that I managed to pick up on eBay. Um, and it's French um, and obviously for pastry. So um, it's amazing sometimes where you find your texture. And then she's used some of my um, handmade uh, texture and a little fish motif. And I love the way that she has, she listened when I said to her that actually don't worry about there being blank spaces because sometimes the blank spaces speak louder than if that texture was all over. So I think that's a really lovely dish. So well done, Becca, that's a goodie. This one is in our favorite studio glaze, which is fog. And as usual, I've taken this off of a a prop and you can see how sharp those shards are on there you really really don't want to be wiping your hand over the bottom of a dish that has that on it so this is Sarah's and this is a fog uh, again textured slab using the studio textures so that's really nice as well and very usable and a lovely present for somebody if it's going to find its way to be a present. So I'll just get the props out as usual. I'm just going to use my gloves just to lift this final shelf out, just in case. I don't think it's very warm, but I'd rather be safe than sorry, as they say. Right, let's pick that one out. Right, in here, on the bottom layer. Oh, quite nice actually. Right, let's have a look at these take the props out necessary evil as we know right sarah this is ah oh, that's lovely look at that really nice so this is again it's another pastry made um roller this is a wonky pot sarah's made a wonky pot using the uh wonky plot wonky pot template from uh upstairs in the studio so this is uh amico um marigold on the bottom and on the legs and on the inside which is this lovely yellow um, color and then on the textured slab which is um, honeycomb and bumblebee she's put some ironstone just to make the texture stand out a little bit which works very well you can see the texture and then she's used um underglazes and fog on the wings of the bees and on the join of the slab to make a feature of it she's used the um, bumblebee mold that we have upstairs and those bumblebees they're so real they look so real really really pretty so that's lovely and again what a lovely present to give somebody with a succulent in so that's really nice well done Sarah uh, Keely uh, this one is yours. So Keely came, she did the introduction to hand building course um, and in her coiling class she made this coil pot um, and then when she came to glaze it she used some masking tape to mask off this pattern. So the pattern where it's not, um, where it's white is the clay body colour so there's no glaze on there and then this glaze is studio favourite Amoco fog. I get through pints and pints and pints of it. And Keely's going to make a um, macrame rope to hang this to put a plant in. So that's a good idea, and it's a it's a good size bowl for a decent plant. Um, so when she's finished it, I'll ask her to uh, to send us a photo of it with its macrame. But that's what the holes are for. So yeah, very successful, and for a, for a first time coiling pot, very useful. Uh, just a couple more things in here, Rebecca, Becky, this is your smallest of smalls. I think that one is iron yellow as well from the look of it. Um, there must have been a spot of glaze on the back of there as you can see. So it's obviously picked up a spot of glaze but I can just file that off. But that's the smallest of the nest that uh, Becca's making. So that's good. And then the last piece in here. This one is really nice. Whose is this? This is Ellie's, right, okay. Ellie, this is lovely. So she's used the Pisces fish um, motif. And I think that this glaze combination is Glacier with um, 
seaweed over the top which is really lovely it's a beautiful green and it almost has like a luster finish on it it's really pretty it's lovely so Ellie that is that is really pretty I really like that and I like the simplicity of the um, fish design in there and again you know a very usable platter how pleased would you be your mother-in-law or your auntie to get one of those in your uh, in your Christmas stocking right so that's all of that short and sweet today um, we are back to back loading kiln um, glaze firings to get through the work and I've um, got a biscuit load that needs to go in um, I'm getting some new uh, glaze storage oh how exciting um, so I've made some uh, these are waiting to be biscuit fired some new test tiles of all the coloured slip that we have in the studio so I've done a test tile of the slip and then on the back I've just put what it is and how many grams of um, pigment I've used so those will be really useful once they're fired um, to put on the uh, new glaze storage that comes tomorrow there's nothing better in my opinion than new storage because it means that I can have a change round in the studio so as I say we're day seven of England's second lockdown so unfortunately there are no classes at the moment um, but we hope to be back after the 2nd of December in the meantime um, do subscribe to my channel there's always videos coming out of glaze opening and top tip Tuesdays um, so if you subscribe and ring the bell it will notify you when the next video is out and do let me know where you're viewing from as I say every time I mean it is quite amazing and I have lovely comments from you all and it's it's much appreciated to know that you're watching and uh, that you're enjoying the work that the students make and uh, hopefully it gives you some insights into some of the Amoco glazes so have a look at my website if you'd like to see my own work um, and there's only just one more thing to say before I sound off and that is the student of the week award so star potter for this particular um, kiln opening I'm going to award to this piece so this piece being a wonky pot I love wonky pots because they have such personality but my particular favorite bit on this particular pot is this bumblebee here because he just looks like he's just flown in and landed on the pot so well done Sarah that's a lovely piece you can be star potter for this glaze firing um, and I will see you all on the next video do have a look at my website which is www.thepotterycorner.co.uk listed on there are the courses and the kiln services because I rent my kilns out to anybody that's local um, and my own uh, work is on the website shop if you'd like to take a look. So there's marble mugs and platters and bits and pieces on there. So 